Let's get a little weird. Let's get a little odd. Those sounds you like to hear. We got it going on. It's the odd cast. It's the odd cast. It's the odd cast. It's the odd cast. Hey everyone, welcome back to the odd cast where we talk about people who are turning their passion into profession and their passion into paycheck subsequently. We have a very special guest today. We got my man, Capitan, Captain. He comes from us originally by way of Pasadena, but now he's out in Vegas. So he's based out in Vegas, but by way of Pasadena. Uh, how you doing, Captain? What's going on, man? What's it's great on? to have you here. Hell yeah, true indeed. True, true indeed. indeed. <laughs> so Captain is an artist. He does a lot of great work, whether it's digital, whether it's kind of accompaniment to you know, storytelling. Uh, he does work with his brother on lazygenius.com. We're going to post that up there for you to find. <laughs> so you better go and check it out. Um, dude, tell us a bit about what originally got you into art in general. Uh, being born. <laughs> I don't know <laughs> so, the, best, really? the best way to put it, being born. Yeah, my, my father was an artist who ended up going into the military, so he kind of let it die off. But then my aunt... She was an artist, teacher, like musician and all that. So it's kind of like I was just kind of, I was born into it a little bit, you know? It makes sense. <laughs> it makes sense. It, it seems to run in the blood a little bit. Yeah. I mean, so it w it was literally always something that you knew, like even as a kid, you were creative. Yeah, I came out drawing, came out drawing, wow. came out always questioning everything. I had people around me that promoted questioning things. My grandfather was a pastor, uh -huh. so he was like, question everything, question me, question everything. My mom, used to, she was telling a story about a week ago, just about I was the only child that she needed a break from. I was like, because I'm the only boy, too, and I'm the youngest, and I, she needed a break from me. Because sometimes you'd be like, why this? Why that? Where are we going? So it just naturally progressed, and I just, you know kept questioning things that I got older. That's the Socratic <laughs> method. That's what Socrates yeah. said. Always question, always question. But I, I, yeah. I totally know what you mean. It's just always like, why this? Why that? Why, why is the air the way it is? Like, yeah, even like just where, simple. where are we going? Who's that? Where they come from? All right, I've listening to music. Who's playing the drums? Who's playing the bass? Why are they playing the bass? Why are they playing like that? So it's just naturally my questions and just, you know, always sitting in the back of church drawing shit, sitting in the back of class drawing shit. So you're a detail-oriented <laughs> person then, too, in that sense. Oh, yeah. Yeah, so that, that makes sense. Oh, I mean, because yeah. a lot of your work is fairly intricate from, from what I've seen. I mean, you know, whether it's, dude, I that, that Mona Lisa print, I had to download oh, that. Yeah. I was about to put her up. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I'm going to put her up. Yeah, that, that was smooth. That was a reaction. The, the digital stuff was a reaction. I had just dropped out of school. Really? And the school, though, like the teachers, were like they were so cool with me. They would let me come in with my brother into the classes. Uh -huh. So it was like this is like my last moment. I'm probably going to be on computers for a while. So I was like, fuck, let me just punch out, punch out a bunch of digital work while I'm here and do as much as I can. And I just went on like a manic state of like, like a film, editing a film, doing all that digital work. And then that's how I kind of put, I put together a sermon, which was the film, digital work, and like paintings and everything, writing everything mixed together. And that was just like my last, like I'm out of school. Like That was where sermon came shit. from? Yeah. Wow. Whoa, because sermon that's wild okay that makes that makes that makes sense i mean so where were where were you at school uh, at art institute in san diego art institute in san diego um yeah. and and you, you just decided you were you were done with that hell yeah everybody knew it though yeah yeah i was with my friend lucian right uh, right before this he's another artist and we were both in advertising eight uh like division whatever and the shit and uh he was telling a story last night about uh me being in class one moment and everybody's having this big debate in class, like, we should do this, we should do that, we should do this. And you just hear squeak, 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 squeak. And I have on headphones, and I'm sitting in class with a paint pen and a canvas, just drawing. And everybody just stops and is like, yo, what the fuck are you doing? <laughs> <laughs> like, I'm just sitting there, squeak, 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 squeak. They, they just tap me like, your pen squeaking. I'm like, oh, my bad, my bad. But yeah, I used to bring, I used to bring canvas and paint pens to class in advertising classes and just sit there and like everybody knew like, yeah, he's 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 about to leave here soon, I believe. So was it like <laughs> was it the advertising nature? But it was like it wasn't so much like I mean, you were looking for something more art oriented. Like yeah, completely. always. I yeah. came I came into the school. I was just using advertising. So I was like, if I'm if I'm gonna learn about marketing, advertising, business things like that, I'm probably should learn it and use it myself, mm -hmm. and then find a way to flip it. I was like, yeah, so why not? 
It's funny though. I feel like I mean I don't mean to speak out of turn to anyone who's an advertiser out there. I'm sorry, but <laughs> I feel like to be honest, like even when I see commercials, like dude, like there's no rhyme or reason to it other than like you know you might get hired to some advertising company, work there for years. I mean, hey. but like dude, I, there's no like crazy yeah, commercial stress, that I see that I'm, out. I couldn't admit. <laughs> yeah, it's just like not creative work though. I hate yeah, to say it's it. It's stressful. It's stressful as shit. They want you to work long hours, stress out, and it's just like. Meh. Nah. Exactly. <laughs> nah. No, no, not about. Even with like the dope <laughs> commercials, like the like the funnier ones, like the new Old Spice ones that are kind of funny. I still feel like you're working for a major corporation. That's oh, going to yeah. be stressful, irregardless. Yeah. 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 So, um, let's move on from that, and then I want to talk a bit. I or we should go back to sermon actually. I because I, I want to talk a bit about that. Like, how did that? Because I know that was you know just to piggyback off the leaving school thing yeah. with how how did that tie into sermon uh well first there's one that hasn't been released that i filmed uh called home and it was like it's like the it's like a flip of like the story of the prodigal son like finally leaving home but this time the prodigal son leaves home and he finds what he's looking for instead of having to go back wow and that's what kind of was like me dropping out of school i was like my mom was the main one who wanted me to graduate and be in the school. So a long time, I was like, I'm doing this for my mom. Mm-hmm. Then eventually, I was like, hey, she going to be happy either way. Like, she'll be happier knowing that. I mean, I can mm, fuck this shit. I'm, I'm going to go do what I want to. Dude, and... she'll be happy knowing you're happy, too. <laughs> Definitely. Frankly. Definitely. So the first one was, like, kind of that, like, I told him, bro, it was a bit of a, little, like, a weird, like, haze. Like, what, what am I going to do? So I just did one. And then I was like, after that, I was like, all right, let's keep rolling. Hmm. And just kept doing the digital work, kept doing the stuff, and kept just, you know, sermon just pieced together, just slowly just, you know, built up. And I was like, I wanted to be this many pieces. I wanted to be this photography. I wanted to be digital. I wanted to be a clump of a bunch of stuff with the same message, same line, and same thought right now. Interesting. I mean, yeah, that's that's one that I mean... I don't want to talk too much about because I just want people to go and look at that <laughs> yeah. m- more to feel it for themselves first, then come back here. So yeah. again, yo, lazygenius.com. dot <laughs> com. Uh, no A. Yeah, no, no a, a in that. Yeah, because yeah. A L-Z- that's lazy. L Z Y. Exactly. Genius. dot com. Oh, we'll put it up A right there for you. And if you don't go, ugh, you're getting left behind. It is what it is. Uh, Sermon. A lot of it too was a, around a time in my life where uh, I was in. Like I said, I grew up in the church. Uh huh. So I was like kind of ending that ways of like I had been for years like not going to church and doing things like that, but now it's really like, man, really like I had a church shit like. Eh. So it was like it kind of you hear the message like we don't need another sermon. So I still use the spiritual aspect, but I kind of flipped it on them like you can tell yourself a lot of the shit that you're getting in church sometimes that in wow. church they're teaching you it, it becomes guilty. They teach guilt. They teach fear. You know, it's always fear of God. And it's like, I'm supposed to have a relationship with him. Why should I be scared? <laughs> wow. So it was like, that. that's what sermon was like a flip on that. Like, you, you can have your, you can tell yourself a lot of these things. Self-regulate self. That's really cool. Whoa, that's actually really deep. <laughs> I mean, you know, I feel like just to tie that interestingly back, though, to, I mean, university in a way. It's like, yeah. dude, I could tell you for a fact, there's basically nothing... Or, yeah, here and there, there might be some equation here or there that I learned in, in university, but I didn't learn damn near anything that I could take to the real world other than like what I taught myself yeah, yeah. from university. Like, I got a degree in political science. What the hell am I going to use? <laughs> <laughs> like, what is political science? That's an oxymoron. Like, it, I was I was blessed to have like a loose advisor. I, I say that because he he, I think he kind of saw it in me too because he had that that vibe. He was like, I'm just here too for this minute. Like, I'm not really, this isn't like my solid concrete job that I'm going to be keeping. Mm -hmm. And he kind of saw the same thing with me. Like, this isn't your solid thing. Like, you ain't really going to be in advertising. It's not what you're going to do. So he set me up with classes to be like, this will help you later. This will help you later. This will, this will help you later. And I was like, "That's cool." And I realized, like, damn, that was that was a uh, good look on that one right there. Yeah, you probably. I mean, you probably would have been gone way before then if it not for him. If anything. Oh yeah. Oh dude. Oh yeah. Yeah. I. I mean, I even got a freaking law degree, and I just did it to use as an avenue almost. But yeah. you know, we'll see. We'll see. I, I'm probably not. <laughs> hopefully, not gonna ever use that. Um, yeah. So, moving on from sermon again, mm-hmm. which. Please check out. Um, I want to ask you about just the inception of uh, Lazy Genius in general, um, because that's that yeah. seemed to be a really interesting. Um, it's, it seems to be more than just 
I, I can't even really put it into one word yeah. other than, <clears throat> excuse me, other than a movement or, I mean, yeah. something like that to the effect. Because it's like coming at you from all different angles. Yeah. I mean, where where did that start from? I was riding in the car with my homeboy, Marquise, um, and I, we was just like making the shirts. And I was like done playing football and shit. And I was like, he was like, oh, you need to call your shirt something. Like, what would you call your company if you made shirts? I was like. That's a good one. I said, I'm going to call it Lazy Genius. So it first started off me just, like, doing iron on shirts, you know what I mean? Like, past my, like, hey, it's Lazy Genius, whatever, whatever. And then it just, like, I left, went to art school in uh, Philadelphia for a minute at the Art Institute. Okay. And, like, chilled out there and really, like, came up with, like, a, a what I felt like was, like, a nice foundation. Uh-huh. Then I moved out to San Diego where I met my brother, which is funny because he lived in uh, Camden, New Jersey, which Whoa. is right across the bridge from Philly. Yeah, my mom's from Reading. Ah, true. Okay, yeah, yeah I know <laughs> the area. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. But we were right across the bridge from each other never, at the same time, never knew each other until we both moved to San Diego. What? Then we moved to San Diego, linked up, and I told him about, you know, I had a blog at the time, and I was always writing, uh-huh. and he was like, I'm with it. I was like, what do you mean? He was like, whatever. He was like, I'm with it. He was like, I like writing. I like. He was like, I'm with it. And he happened to be in uh, school at the Art Institute for photography. So I was like... I needed a photographer this whole time. Like, so it just grew from like us being writers, and then I have I have goosebumps. I'm not, <laughs> that's crazy though. That shit sorry, is crazy. sorry to interrupt, but <laughs> no, that's good. just like that's like so many things like fitting together yeah. to the world just, is really crazy sometimes. I mean, in a good way. I mean, oh hell yeah. That's so. Then it grew from there, having a photographer, you blogging, and then you yeah. both kind of just grew as artists together. Yeah, he well. It it depends on how who you ask. I don't know. I've always I've always been like kind of you know like setting this mode of being like this is what I'm doing and I don't give a fuck. Mm-hmm. We definitely grew a lot together. We grew outside of just artistry. We grew you know as men. You know mm-hmm. what I mean. He, uh, he had another child and we both learned a lot. We both taught a lot. He was always interested in reading and writing. So like mm-hmm. that helped me even more with like reading more because I was like fuck reading. <laughs> so I was like I started reading a lot more when he came around and just the writing changed and everything just to expand more. And it was wow. like I had somebody that was always with me if I was like I want to film this right now. He was like let's go. Oh. We'll be up at like three in the morning going to do this. I want to take pictures here. Like So it was always somebody there to be like hey let's go let's go let's go. So it wasn't just myself all the time being like that's because I'm always I'm always a, I'm a good self self motivation person, person to have somebody with you though like that to be like at any moment like hey what you need let's go dude it, it's so <laughs> funny that you, I mean, it's so funny that you said that because I, this has come up naturally in the past literally like four episodes that I've done yeah. how important self motivation is when you're a creator yeah because definitely. at points you're not gonna have people to collab with and funk yeah. with and work off of and but. At the same time, when you do, it's like that crazy, like dual self motivators yeah. getting in. It's like, it's like a pseudo drug in a way. It's <laughs> it's it's wild. Um, that's that's super cool though. It it also you know one thing it's interesting just from you know meeting you and hearing like dude you definitely are like you have. A wide breadth of influences like yeah. whether it's philadelphia whether it's vegas whether it's pasadena whether it's san diego i mean i'm sure there's yeah, yeah. other places in the mix too i'm yeah, yeah exactly <laughs> um but i i'm sure that's influenced your ability to kind of like bob and weave and oh, yeah. kind of stick to your own motion in terms of that oh yeah i haven't been home in about a month and a half two months already wow so that's why i say my base is out in henderson but i haven't been home in like yeah two months Wow, I've been at my, I've been in Memphis. Did some work out there. Did two murals out there. Shout out to my partner. I gotta say that too. Shout out to my collab partner in Memphis, Francis Berry. That's who I work with out there. She's she's dope as hell. Three plus Uh, four. We're gonna be talking about that real quick. (laughs) So like, I do I do a lot of work. I actually met her at a residency in upstate New York at Mm. the top of last year. So it's coming up on yeah the first year we met her. We done we did a lot of work together. So I'm out of Memphis a lot, traveling around, went to Philly. I've been. Yeah, I mean, you know, Roman. <laughs> Me- Memphis is smooth. I've not been there since a kid, but Memphis is smooth. Oh, yeah, I love Memphis. Yeah. Memphis is definitely second home. I feel like they took me in, you know. I'm yeah? Like, I'm like, yes, this is home. Memphis- I wear I wear two pins on my hats when I when I move around. I usually got a Pasadena uh, pin, and now I got a Memphis pin, so... You know, that's nice. Second home, like the war stickers <laughs> on the on the Ohio State yeah. helmets, oh, kind yeah. of thing. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's cool. That's cool. So you mentioned you mentioned also that you you had played football um, yeah, for definitely. a minute. Yeah. yeah. So uh, did that? I mean, like 
being an athlete at any level, does that like have any influence oh, on definitely. you? Definitely, hell yeah, I'm sure. Hell yeah, we got that. Uh, I I call it the uh the field like being on the field mentality and not being in the stands. Like I can't stand to watch something. I'd rather be a part of it. Yep. Like I'd rather be on the field and having people watch me like play and do what I do and not be watching. Like I can't I can't stand to watch stuff. Sometimes I get a little agitated. Like I'm calm <laughs> and people know that I I'm calm and cool a lot of time. But inside I'd be like, well, I still got that like football player aggression like i'm ready at any moment <laughs> like i think i could run through walls it's like it can't be the face in the crowd mentality oh hell yeah it can't be the face <laughs> in the, I, the put the helmet on mentality as cam yeah. chancellor used to say i i had to actually like step back from watching college sports when i like started getting to like 21 22 23 because yeah. i was like oh that's <laughs> never gonna happen for you yeah. I, I've gotten better at watching things. But for a while, I couldn't. I couldn't watch things. I tried coaching football at a, a high school too, uh-huh. at one point, and I was like, I practice like just like I'm about to run these little kids over. Like, hey, just do it like this. I was like, they're like, yo, you don't got on pads. I'm like, it doesn't matter, yo, yo, come on, let's get this. Let's. What are, what are you doing? What are you doing? It's step, step. What are you doing? Like, so I was like, nah, let me step back a little bit. But yeah, I, got better. I can watch a few things, but it's rare that I watch stuff now. I'm always. Yeah, I just I just want to be backstage. I want to help. I want to be helping somebody. You're a creator. I think that yeah. that naturally lends itself to the the fact that like even like for example like being like dude advertising like no I'm gonna be the one who's drawing <laughs> the stuff that they yeah. use and they'll be like whoa who drew that oh like, yeah that's gonna be I'm Hell not yeah. gonna I'll be in the first stage of that Hell yeah <laughs> yeah that's awesome that's awesome so now that we talked about Memphis I be mm-hmm. I feel like that was a I feel like that was a good introduction I want to ask you a bit about the uh, the three plus floor deal. I mean, we were talking right. about it before. Right. If you care to, if you care to share with the folks out there, that's just math is usually always on a lot of my work. Three plus four has become like the main one I use, but I'll switch it up sometimes. You might see seven take away eleven. People are like you can't do that. I'm like, hey, it's up to you. You might see <laughs> you see different things. I used to uh, give equations with words. I scratched the words. And I was like, yeah, that's useless, and I just went straight to the equation because uh, you know it's math. Everybody understands it as math. Like a lot of stuff that I do, people say, you know, it's abstract, it's this, it's that. They they search for things. It's a lot of things in there mushed all together. And you, different people see different things and whatever I draw and whatever I do. Like you, we all learn different things, which is like I invite that and I actually love it. But the one thing you can't question is the math. I see. You know what I see in that? Just oddly <laughs> enough, just because when how the three, the lower part of the three hangs down a little bit and the four, I see a yeah. heart. Uh like them adding together to make a heart sideways heart like going that way see i can i can rock with you there yeah, i don't know i, I don't know i'm just all positivity <laughs> yeah, all positivity okay. <laughs> <laughs> i don't know see i that's what that, i think that's in a way though what the cool thing is about a lot of your work is like you have your like definition of it but in a way your definition of it is like the viewer i feel like can yeah. take their own definition of it and apply it to um, your work how they want i learned uh actually one of my residencies david gersten he was talking to me about being an artist like different things like uh, talking to the paper and allowing the paper to talk to you like, wow. whatever service you're working on and not like too much trying to tell it where to go so a lot of stuff with me is like i'm just listening as i go too. like different things that i see like so really? sometimes i step back and i'm like eh, i don't know what it is it's just like i'm so I'm so geared to go, like, I don't sit back too many times and look at what I'm doing. I'm just let it go and just keep going, let it go and just keep going. And I let everybody else figure it out. Really? <laughs> wow, that's wild. That's so interesting. The other thing that I heard about uh, from from uh, an artist is um, that there's only one thing that you don't want from uh, the reaction to your work. Mm. You can have someone love it or hate it, but you don't want someone to not have any reaction to it at all. Oh, yeah. That's I'm- like the worst. Shit, for the most part, I don't even, I don't even matter. I don't even care about that because a lot, really? lot of my work is like me. It's like my personality. You know, a lot of times, uh, people look at me and they see one thing, uh-huh. and then they get they get a little into it and be like, "Oh shit, it's totally different than what I was <laughs> expecting." Like, what the fuck happened here? Yeah. And, and sometimes my work is like that. It's quiet, and you like you might walk past it one time, but uh-huh. then you come back and be like. What the fuck is in here? So it's a <laughs> like, peel the layers like, back type of deal. Yeah, definitely. That's interesting. Definitely. I mean, I yeah, I know I can I can definitely I can definitely dig that, and I mean I think part of that plays into you know the fact 
of the, you know, roaming around being from different yeah. places can't really, I mean, put a pin on, because, you know, like... Oh, everybody that know me, they know I'm, I'm a ghost. Yeah, I'm definitely, <laughs> I call myself the ghost, and I, you know, I move as such sometimes. I, I pop up, I appear when I want to, and I'm a ghost. I'm a ghost. <laughs> <laughs> what was the ghost in Pokemon? It was uh, Gengar, yeah. uh, yeah. <laughs> Gengar. Gengar. Gengar on them. Gengar. Sitting out here. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. So I'm a professional. I, I've, I've been... Uh, perfecting my irish goodbye so i've been you know <laughs> they just disappearing on people like you never see me you know <laughs> hey sometimes it's for the better sometimes yeah. it's for the better that's awesome so i mean how in this is one i always like to ask just because i feel like it's so relevant these days mm-hmm. um in a time when social media is perceived as so negative mm-hmm. how do you think there's so many positives of it positives of it for you as an artist uh well in that part i'm a, I'm still a ghost you know some people say i'm not i don't post enough i just i use it how I, was, how I want to yeah you know i know i have to post and i know it's beneficial for me to post just because yeah. you know more eyes everybody wants the eyes everybody needs the eyes you know what i mean unless you just true really want to be like not seen ever but if you want to be seen and you have work that you feel you know it's beneficial you have to it's a good way to get it. exposure yeah and i i'm I slow roll on that, and that's why other people, I'm a ghost on that, too. I just come around when I feel like it. Yeah. It might be some random, like, what what's going on here? It's just, you know, I'm always doing shit when I feel like it. You, you know what's <laughs> funny, though, is I, I'm not even saying this to just agree with that, that sentiment and that style, but whenever I do, like, get, whenever I do think of, like, a an artist or, like, a, yeah. you know, they kind of have that style to them as well, like, yeah. you know, kind of that, you know... And that, you know, helps you A, roll with the punches, B, kind of be fluid in your work, you know, not get pinned down to one style. Um, and also, I mean, I feel like that also allows you to probably collab with a, you know, yeah. different I, wide set of people. Well, I'm a sucker for routine. Uh-huh. So I'm big on routines. Like, I, I get into routines where, like, it would be, like, weeks where I wear the same thing. And, like, I do the same thing repeatedly over and over and over and over. Really? So sometimes I have to, like do something to kind of break the routine but i'm i'm a sucker for routines i do i do the same shit over for like would, would you I'm call it home. superstition no nah, not superstition i just i i i enjoy the the feeling yeah you know or sometimes i might be asking a question and then i want to remember that question for a long period of time instead of just being like asking and like dis- discarding it uh-huh. it's like i want to peel back the layers and be like all right why am i asking this question all right, why do I feel this way about this question? All right, is there anything in the past that has me feel anything about this question? Or are this, you know what I mean? Is there or like anything what in the result past? am I looking for? And yeah. if so, what am I going to take from that? I know, I is trust there... me. I'm, I'm with you on that. I mean, you're, I, I think you're like me where it's like, you probably, do you suffer from a little bit of insomnia? Oh, yeah. I'm, okay. I'm not good at sleeping. I, ne- neither am I. I could, from just that last statement, I, I, <laughs> yeah yeah shout out to that yeah. <laughs> shout out to that yeah. um that's interesting so would, would you say like would you say the art scene is like I, this might be a stupid question but i'm on the outside looking in um the art scene is like obviously vastly different in philly than it is in memphis than Definitely. it is in pasadena than it is in vegas than it would be in freaking alaska yeah um how i mean would you would you recommend for like anyone who you know is trying to make that leap of turning their passion into you know actually fruition uh to go out and roam and explore and get different styles well i mean all the scenes are different but Mm -hmm. the end result is the same people just want dope shit wow (laughs) like the end the end result people want people just want shit that looks good that they fucking love that makes them feel you know some type of way and that they can you know carry on through the years Huh. That's ultimately what they want, no matter where you go. So it's like, if you're just, you know, producing what your heart tells you to produce, kind of. I don't want to sound like cliche about that, but producing what you really want to, it's not like producing mimic. You mimic shit like that's cliche. Mimic, exist yeah. For a reason. <laughs> so, you know, exist that's for a mimic. Reason. But if you, you know, just producing whatever the fuck you feel like, like people huh. enjoy, people enjoy beautiful dope shit. Yeah, that's true. That's true. I know. I mean, I think I think too like how art is right now and fashion right now. There's so much so much stuff and so much accessible stuff. It's pretty yeah. cool because like basically you can rock whatever style you want right now yeah. and you can look as fresh as you want in your own way and like it, it's it's oh, super yeah. cool. I think that's one of the I mean, 
one of the benefits that I've taken from social media just for the podcast is like getting to link up with cats. Like, I mean, we linked yeah, up via social media yeah, and yeah. it's just been like, you can, you can kind of quickly, you know, figure out, you know, who's going to roll with you and who's going it, to, it's yeah. cool. It's a, it's a good deal. It's a good deal. And, um, you know, people like good people. Yep. Dope shit. And real recognize and, real. Yeah, and <laughs> just like, you know, respectful people. Like, yep. they like. Everybody usually wants and likes the same shit. <laughs> yeah, it's true. It's true. I mean, all that's, you know, treat others how you want to be treated yeah. and this, that, and the th- Yeah, it's, it's, no, it is, it is true. It is totally true. Um, let's see. You know, the, uh, you know, I, I wanted to definitely ask a few other things about the uh, website. Um, yeah. You know, you were saying the, um, those interesting Mona Lisa prints were great. Uh, the was the Benjamin Franklin one done at the same time too. Yeah, wow, that yeah. That was those were those were yeah. crazy. I mean, the concept behind that of cutting the Franklin out and putting the yeah. that was those that was are, really cool. Those were a few years ago. Yeah, those are all yeah, just just same period, same period in time with like stuff that I was doing for sermon. I was like, this isn't gonna make sermon. I got a whole folder full of like different digital files like that. Wow. Like, yeah. Wow. So yeah, what do you what do you I mean, I'm sure that it's kind of like a musical artist in that, you know, even when they put out mixtapes and then albums, there's yeah. still like hundreds of songs yeah. that haven't been released. <laughs> like how much stuff do you have not released? And is there a re- like, is there, it's just kind of your decision. You're like, that's not with the flow right uh, now or what? I got, man, I I just got shit everywhere. It's just, I don't know what to do with my hands. Otherwise, <laughs> like I have to be, you know, I got to do shit. Yeah, so I has got it everywhere. My mom's house is full of paintings. My house is full of paintings. I mean, like the living wow. room closets. Like, I got work in Memphis. I got work. It's <laughs> everywhere. Like, I, I go to like residencies, like in the Bay, and like I do like be there. I was there for six weeks uh-huh. working on a project. I did a lot of that project. I took home a few things, but most of it was just like, hey, I can't, I can't travel with it. Wow. Where Somebody were, take it. Where were you Here in you the go. Bay? Portola Valley. Oh, Portola Valley. Awesome. Yeah, cool, cool, cool. There. Building 180. Shout out to Building 182. Thank Shout you. out. You know, Building 180, their residency program. I was up there working on a bunch of stuff. And a lot of times I go places, I'm like, I can't take it. So Wow. So it is. I mean, it, so, it sounds like it's like that. Also, I mean, for me at least, I, I know that now that I've started the podcast and I'm not necessarily like, you know doing much else when i'm working on that it's like yeah. that's the time when i'm not like feeling like any other thing like i'm not and an- get yeah. no anxiety <laughs> get no insomnia like get no i'm just like involved in it and yeah. i love just editing the videos i love just talking to the people just like when even watching back the videos i'm just yeah, getting yeah. such juice i feel like that's what you're saying when you're like i can't keep my hands still yeah, type can't. of thing i don't know what else to do yeah I, and i realized that since i was a kid i don't know what else to do with it like yeah. What am I supposed to do now? Like, playing sports helped. Yeah, that was cool. But besides that, it's like, yeah, I'm going to be writing. I'm going to be doing something. Like, what am I supposed to do? <laughs> well, okay, so one, uh, one thing I would say is since it's passion to paychecks, what would you say yeah. to anyone out there who's maybe, like, doing something and they they have that feeling of, like, yo, my, my hand, <laughs> I don't want to be at this it. desk typing in this invoice. You know, I want to. I mean, even if even if they have to continue to do that, yeah. would you say like, dude, after that work? I mean, after work, get right on it. Like, yeah, you can. I mean, a lot of people talk about time and stuff, and like, time is whatever the fuck you want it to be. So it's up to you. So, like, you can be at a job. But a person like me, I got a weird like. If I have a, if I had a nine to five, I'm like supremely focused on it. True. Yeah, I'm gonna get lost in it. So I realized, why not get lost in what I'm doing? Wow. <laughs> See that's okay. There's the point. I think that's the yeah. point. I mean, because I'm I'm the same way. I'm, the, my my parents always taught me like if you're gonna do something, you just yeah. might as well be the best. Even if you're kicking a can down the street, yeah, yeah. kick that can like <laughs> freaking Ronaldinho, you know? Oh yeah. Um, but like, so. And that's that's um that's the four agreements. Yeah, the fourth agreement. Uh, Don, I think what's the name of the book? Don uh, Manuel Marquez, I believe he wrote it. Oh. But the fourth agreement is always do your best. So whatever it is, like, and that yeah. that was something like my dad. He's a military man, past like church military. You know, it was kind of <laughs> ingrained into me. Like, if you're yeah. going to do something, like go 110. Don't don't just do it like halfway. If you're doing it halfway, why are you doing it? Yeah. So especially too i mean like we were talking cliches earlier yeah. you get what you put into it you yeah, get definitely. out of it what you put into it so if definitely. you're going to be putting 110 percent into something you're passionate about like success is such an arbitrary or 
success is such an objective definition like yeah. everyone has their or subjective everyone has their own subjective definition of success yeah. whether it be earning two hundred fifty thousand dollars a year whether it be uh doing what you exactly feel like it is your purpose on the earth to be doing whether it's you know creating whether it's yeah. being a pastor whether it's being a football player whether it's being a race car driver i mean to be honest, I think that's the reason that we call it passion to paychecks is yeah. because I think it's such a powerful, th- powerful thing, and I think that's what every human's goal is. Yeah. But sometimes we get held back from doing that just because we want that four hundred one k, we want that yeah. dental plan, we want that health <laughs> plan, we need that house insurance, we want to pay that mortgage. But like you said, there's ways that you can easily do that as long as you put in the effort. Yeah. But sometimes I feel like with artists and creators, it's like viewed as we're just doing it because we're lazy and we're just sitting there but it's like <laughs> dude the mind is turning 24 freaking seven it's exhausting that's the that's the lazy genius thing the lazy part uh, they think it's like lazy sitting around but it's like it's more of a meditative oh yeah it's like i'm i'm meditating i'm meditating on thoughts and then the genius appears that's where you you know you, you can't be wow you can't be a genius unless you sit and think about shit no <laughs> you can't you know no. Unless you <laughs> no, unless you just have somehow yeah. stuff getting shot into your head, no way. Yeah, yeah. You you reminded me though. Um, recently did a mural project and the theme was dream big, oh. and we hated the theme of that, like dream big, because we believe like you can dream big, but what about the work? Like you have to put in a certain amount of work after you had that dream. You have to you have to put your two feet on the ground. You have to run. You got to work. That's like having the motivation but no yeah. dedication. Yeah, it's like which which one is it? Like you because you could dream forever. Yeah. So huh. if, if, if you dream without work put behind it, even though I I like to go with people and like I can go biblical too. Um, my grandfather used to always tell me like you can you can ask God for something, but if you're not going out to try to take the steps to you know what I mean, do do what you need to. Like, well, he just God's just gonna look at you like. All right. <laughs> you think that I mean? I mean, I I can totally see that. That yeah. makes sense. Um, I, yeah, like putting putting an effort. It's so it's so funny though. It's I mean, I saw there was a there was a quote going around. It was one of those you know like start your podcast or yeah. write your album or draw that picture. Like it was just like yeah. do it and it's so simple. But like it's so funny. I mean. That's why Nike's a billion dollar company from coming up with the line, just do it. Definitely. I mean, it's yeah. so simple, but it's sometimes so hard to actually put into practice. Yeah. I, that, that was a little bit too the base of uh, the last body of work I did. I called it 64 Till. Oh, okay. And it was based on, you know, 1964, the welfare state, uh, mm-hmm. the war on poverty started all that with Lyndon Johnson. Mm-hmm. And uh, a lot of people don't know, like, welfare and all that shit kind of stunts people's, like, will to go out and do shit. So the paintings and stuff that I did was based on those themes of, you know, wow. the, you know, people like after that shit started, people was like, eh, I can do it, but I'm getting this welfare check. <laughs> and like, wow. <laughs> you know, realizing that sometimes helping people actually, it, I mean, of and course it's good. Yeah. But there's also some bad that comes with helping people. It's like, um, what's his Enabling name? Enabling. Enabling. In, in a way, yeah, halfway. I a mean, little bit. It's, it's, it's so hard. It's they such a fine line. It. It's such a fine line between yeah. helping and enabling. And, uh, wow. That's, whoa, that's it's deep. Says, thinking about like uh, cosmic justice and social justice. Huh. Like sometimes cosmic justice, like it isn't fair, <laughs> but it, sometimes the unfairness works in your favor if you allow it to. The social justice, everybody wants to, you know, be like, let me help others, help others. Sometimes helping people, though, is it's not helping. And just for just for them out there, would you define, define the difference between cosmic and social justice? Cosmic justice is just like, you know, the universe yeah. destined to be. Like, I had, like, my dad had a long-ass walk to middle school, like, walking down the hill every single day. Like, uh-huh. he didn't complain, though. He just did it. You it's know just what I mean? That's just how it was. Yeah. Social justice is somebody interfering with what's going on cosmically and being like you shouldn't have to do this walk so let me try to do it like sometimes so we have to have a balance between you have to have I a, think. nah you can't have a balance that's the funny part there You're is right. no balance they're at odds because they're yeah. at odds yeah there is there is no balance wow i mean you yeah in a utopia you would like yeah. to have balance of actually course. um that's interesting that's in- I'm, I'm never wow i mean that's 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 deeply interesting i think you know 
a similar argument I heard was, uh, you know, Justice Clarence Thomas always said that he hated affirmative action because he felt like yeah. everyone looked down on him because and that's, that the affirmative action is more like social, social yeah. justice yeah. instead of allowing cosmic justice. Because, and that was the base of a lot of with sixty four too. It was like if you just allow people sometimes to stumble and fall and then learn and get up by themselves, it's better than just being like picking them up. Wow, <laughs> he was like, I got you. <laughs> like here, go this way, because then, then who has they don't they don't have control over their life at that point. Yeah, all they're relying on is the way you know the the, the wind, how they put, how, which way you push them. Like, and in a weird way, way, yeah, the assumption is the assumption though is that oh, I helped them out with the initial push. Now yeah. they should be okay. Yeah, they should be good. It's like, but it's like nah. that's no, yeah, because you've set up a habitual process now. Yeah, that's interesting. Wow, I I was that, actually listening to a podcast uh, on Spotify called I believe it's called like philosophize now or philosophize this or something like that and mm-hmm. one of the last lines he was saying in the podcast was like a lot of people don't realize sometimes they talk about like changing the narrative and changing the direction of things but they don't think about what are you changing it to what are you replacing it with then? and what's you the wanna, purpose even of yeah that like direction. <laughs> you want it you want to change the direction but after we change the direction what's next huh a lot of people don't think about that gap of being like, or how do you replace what you what you're trying to you know you take out? What are you replacing it with? Interesting. That's yeah. That's and that's kind of you uh, you know that that wouldn't go a lot deeper with different things happening. Like all right, you take that out. What's the replacement? Yeah, yeah. That's it's, I mean that's I. It's very relevant right now with yeah. just I mean all the shifting and moving within the U.S. It's it's pretty wild. Yeah. So and that's a that's a lot of people that's a lot of fear of people that have nine to fives like that is similar things like all right if I walk away from this job uh-huh. what am I replacing this security and stability with like and they bank you know they lean so heavy on that security and stability like not knowing sometimes you you're gonna be real secure and stable if you get rid of that shit <laughs> yeah yeah and it's like almost to be honest it's like secure and stable in a different way it's like yeah, yeah. you're just like. If you if you can just like get past the initial like oh I don't have a four hundred one k anxiety yeah. of it, then it's like so freeing. Yeah. To be honest, just to know that every day like, dude, like every day I could wake up and meet a new dope person yeah. to to talk to and podcast with, and or I mean even just to chop it up with, or I mean like I'm I'm a huge uh, Liverpool fan from the English Premier League, mm-hmm. and. Uh, shout out to shout out to my guys over in Liverpool. I had some people just like, dude, we're missing your Liverpool reactions because I would react to the goals, and it's like, yo, that's so cool. Like yeah, that would have yeah, never yeah. happened if I was just sitting at work because the games come on during work. Yeah, yeah. Like, fuck that, I'm not missing. It. Yeah, fuck yeah. that. I'm when I'm at home, I watch planes all day. Oh yeah, I, dude, I was seeing that. Of, I wanted yeah. to ask about that. <laughs> A lot of people know, like, I, that's what I do. Like, I wake up with the sun. I, you know, I watch the sunset uh-huh. every day. Like my lady knows, like at, at a certain time, eighty the sun's about to go down. He's about to go watch the sunset. <laughs> He's about to go watch planes and sit up there, and you know, like so. Every time I'm home, every day, that's all I do. Usually, is watch planes and paint. Watch planes, paint, write, do whatever I do. But that's what I said too. I'm a sucker to routine, and that's one of those things. It's like. Yeah, I'm watching these planes. I got to. Is it? I mean, is it anything specific about the planes, or is it the routine of it more so? Uh, I mean, I do like I do love planes, and I mean, yeah, I mean, my name is Captain too, so you know, it's captains. True. You know, I like to say I, I learned how to fly a plane from the ground. So I like that. <laughs> I like that. Um, that's really cool. I, I, you know, it's funny. I, I've always, even when I was a a, a wee kid, I used to go to the airport with my pops and yeah. literally like. I used to be able to point out all the tails of the plane. So I, I, I'm a plane watcher too, man. I am a plane watcher aficionado for sure. (laughs) Um, Dude, uh, this is the other one that that just reminded me when I said it. The first line on your Instagram bio is candy aisle connoisseur. Oh, definitely. I'm a candy aisle connoisseur. No chocolate stove, no cakes and pies. You can cut all that shit out. You really? Just leave me me the sour candies. Give me the Skittles. Give me the lemon heads. Give me the now laters. Just, just, hey. No chocolates, though. Candy Owl Connoisseur. Thank you. Yeah. Dude, I'm I'm the same <laughs> way, man. It's straight Haribo, sour yeah, Skittles hell yeah. to the death. Hell uh, yeah. The sweet heat Skittles is delicious. Oh, I haven't <laughs> tried those. Are they are they wild? Yeah. Hell yeah. How hot wait, what what They're are they? are not like? really like hot, hot. But I, I, I love I love hot things and I love sour things. So okay. like that little mix of like that little hot it's like, and the sweetness from the from the different like Skittles, like it's not like too outrageous, but it's it's just enough. It's cool. Yeah, it's crazy to think like that. I mean, when I learned about how 
candy and stuff was made that it's just like a bunch of guys and gals just in lab coats like doop, doop, <laughs> and then they test it out they're like mm, this oh, yeah. like it's so wild to think about but they yeah. get it they nail it <laughs> and everybody knows like that you want to like do something just give me a box of lemon heads or something and be like like he's look like he's cool. <laughs> he's cool. He got his. He has his lemon heads. He just, he's over there drawing. He's good. He's good. That's awesome. <laughs> just That's let him awesome. Be. So I mean, you must have been. You must have been like a wild, wild doodler, not paying attention in class always. Oh uh, yeah. That's fine. <laughs> That's fine. Yeah, your margins. I got, I got crazy. Just... I got crazy stories from from things in school. Like I, that's why I feel like I was set up a little bit. Like teachers will let me do different things or like. My mom's, one of my mom's favorite stories is me in the second grade and, like, uh-huh. the teacher calling home and saying, yo, like, your son's going to have a problem. <laughs> he was in class drawing. It was a beautiful drawing. He got towards the end. He messed up one line. He threw it away and started again. She was like, that's going to be an issue. <laughs> but <laughs> I don't know if it was fortunately or unfortunately I got into a little thing with that same teacher <laughs> where I ended up, like, throwing a desk at her. Like, and they put me in a cubicle in the back of the class. Like, I was kind of boarded off from the rest of the students. So oh I was just gosh. in the back of the class listening to books on tape and drawing. I would <laughs> I was I like, I would have thrown a desk at every teacher in <laughs> so, every classroom. Then so up. it was like a setup. And then, like, even, so that was second grade. I got to fifth grade, and I got, like, a new teacher. She was a young teacher there. And, like, she was a teacher. She was, like, drawing a desk. I was like, you sure? <laughs> she was like, have at it. So every day I was just drawing my desk, coming in, erasing it, drawing something else new on my desk, erasing it, drawing something on my desk. Whoa. So that's what I was like. I was always kind of set up in that way. And people was like, eh, we're just going to let him. Well, I mean, that's awesome, though. I mean, that, that's also, I mean, you know, not to big up you or anything, but that is like, the, yeah. they're they're seeing talent in, in, in a certain sense. I mean, like, I can't get in the way of this. Like, I, don't, I don't know if it was fully them seeing talent or like, I was like... <laughs> <laughs> I'm a quiet guy, and sometimes you know the quietness. They were like, "He's gonna let him chill and be <laughs> quiet." <laughs> like, it's, better, it's better let him chill and be quiet. We're just That's gonna do funny. that. That's funny. I yeah, I was. The, I'm I, to be honest, I was the total opposite. I was the one who would get everyone laughing, and then yeah. I'm laughing. But since my voice, for whatever reason, they'd be like, "Michael," <laughs> be the worst. But. I had the total opposite relationship. They, I did not get to let. I like went the whole route of school with yeah. hating it the whole time, and I regret wasting the time. But I met a lot of great people. It, it was cool. I got actually. Uh, I don't know if you would call it. I didn't call it kicked out. I got kicked out of high school, which uh-huh. actually ended up like being beneficial for me. So <laughs> it was like art class. It was like, what's art <clears throat> class? Me and my grandparents going around to different museums and shit, and me having to write a report. And I'm like. This is better than sitting in school. Like, so, yeah, <laughs> like this is all I have to do, dude. Cool, I can do this. That's that's every like um yeah one of my one of my shout out to Servi Wood in the, in Vallejo. He says uh we don't take losses, we learn lessons. Yeah. So like you could take you could see oh I got kicked out of school as a loss. No, you learned a lesson. It's like oh yeah, no, yeah. this is what I want to do. This it just proves your point. So if anything, it's validation. Um, I think that's a powerful that's a powerful way to go about life. Um, what I definitely want to ask is what's, you know, what, what's, what's working on now? I know you said you had more mural stuff coming up. I know you yeah. said you had the Memphis stuff coming up. Yeah. The Memphis always collab. in Memphis. Yeah. yeah. Always in Memphis. Shit. Like I said, I came to Cali from Memphis. So. <laughs> wow. <laughs> Who knows? I usually, you know, it's usually fast. Maybe like one day get a call the next day, you know. Really? Next day or the end of the week. It's just, you know. Wow. So. Memphis, that's always a definite, uh, just, you know, traveling around different places. I'm always working on stuff. I always got stuff where I'm like, you know. What's the food move in Memphis? Don't know. You No, really? No, like, no spots you hit when you're down there? Nah. What's the food move in San Diego? Don't know. Really? <laughs> what, only just strictly uh, fire hot Skittles? <laughs> Don't really. I'm, I basically inhale candy and good air all day. <laughs> like, I usually, I man, I'm... Food and me, like I'm, like I tell people, I'm 95% vegan, and that 95% is when I'm at home and I can prepare meals. When I get on the road, though, sometimes like I'm doing so much shit and I'm raping and running, I don't give a fuck about what I'm eating. I'm really? Just, like, give, give me something real quick. Like I don't eat every every day. I don't eat until two, three o'clock in the afternoon anyway. 
I'm the same. I, I, I so. forget to eat. <laughs> yeah, I literally yeah. forget to eat. I forget to sleep. I even, dude, sometimes I like feel my bladder and I feel like, whoa, dude, I What's forgot happening? to piss. Yeah. That's like, why I tell people candy and good air. That's what I said. That's what I survived. That, that might be, have to be the title of the episode candy and good air. Hell yeah. Um, <laughs> it's definitely me candy and that's candy out kind of story i can't survive on candy and good air yeah yeah dude so that's that's freaking awesome um <laughs> have you have you done any um my bad i'm not if hmm. i missed this not have either. you done any uh like other like full-blown clothing stuff like releases um nah everything okay, is I'm, usually for the people closest to me okay how do people say. tell me too like because i i did have a gig it was a part-time gig where i work one day a week at a lids and that was beneficial for me because i went in and did shit like this i made my hats i made hats for different oh, and people a little whooped you up yeah just paid for them you know just got my got my employee discount Smooth. boom 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 and i was like yeah this is cool but got rid of that but i mean i'm just saying it is it, usually it's usually it's usually for me or people close to me right? yeah it's an, it, it is it, it isn't an interesting like how i kind of look at it now is like it's so popular for like any type of artist yeah, yeah even like if you're a podcaster to have a clothing line yeah because yeah. it's an easy way i or i shouldn't say that that's almost disrespectful but it is yeah. like an, i feel like the reason it is is because it's an easy way to monetize yeah it is um but a lot of people got get angry at me too sometimes like me and my brother used to wear shirts like i did at at the school like they had a, a silk screen pro- uh, program uh-huh. i did the silk screen program and i was making shirts for just me and my brother and a lot of people were like why aren't you selling this? I'm like, nah, it's just for me and him. <laughs> like, if I had, we had multiple shirts. Like, I even like sewn on shirts with embroidery. And people were like, you you selling those? Nah, it's just me and him. I like, was like, what the fuck? This dude's weird. Like, you just make shit for yourself? Yeah. <laughs> oh my gosh. Yeah, I did. You know what's funny is I um I've met I've met uh, rappers who are like that. Yeah. Like who I've heard their stuff and I'm like, dang, like that's that's pretty darn good. Like you could. And they're just like, I just like this because, like, I hear rap and I, like, think that this is how it should sound. Or, like, maybe you see, mm-hmm. like, all right, this is how it should look. But it's, like, I'm not trying to, like, go out there and be, like, in the freaking factory picking out designs. Oh, I definitely like, am, though. Really? I'm not going to deny that part. Yeah, I definitely am. I'm, I'm on with that. Dude, you just, should. Hey. At this point, I just know I got I have a certain a certain level where I like to see shit. But yeah. down the road, I definitely see myself in a factory picking out shit, doing Dude. this, mixing it around. I definitely... It, I, just at this point you know you have to you have to <laughs> dude if 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 the, if the only feedback has been hot man there's, there's no way you can't you know push that oh, envelope yeah. a little bit you know i like i love personal touches oh, so yeah. a lot of the hats i make for people i put like personal touches like i'm, I'm big into dates and, okay. and numbers and stuff so i put a lot of different dates and numbers on different people's stuff like that so interesting different words and so i'm That's real into sick. personal touches so i already know if i'm in the factory it's like i still have to be there you know giving putting a personal touch so every hat it might look the same in some sense but it's not the same because there's something different on each one you're gonna either have to do made in the <laughs> usa products or you're gonna have man, to learn yeah. chinese man hey, learn I'm taiwanese I, I, I get a translator <laughs> <laughs> dude they have, get those, a translator. they have those things now they have the new things that you can put in your ear and it just whooped you off for you oh shit well i'm hey whatever it gotta do i'm yeah, <laughs> i'm with it you're like what was that hold on doom, doom, doom. <laughs> i got you i got you i need that <laughs> yeah yeah no i mean that's dude i think that's definitely would be a good look for you guys especially i mean uh, like I've only seen one thing, but like yeah. the the name lends itself to it, and uh, the yeah. brand is is it's it's sellable, you know, like yeah. from a marketing stand. I mean, it, I know that sounds corny and corporate, <laughs> but it is it is what it is. You do have to look at some stuff like that. Yeah. And that being said, that's kind of what I wanted to you know maybe transition off. And I mean, we've covered a lot of stuff. Uh, maybe finish off on in a way. Um, other than I want to give you the opportunity to also sign us off and give you final shout outs, of course. Um, but definitely wanted to ask, uh, like, how how has, you know, because at some point, you know, there does have to be that monetization from art yeah. in order to turn the passion into profession, the passion into paychecks and sustain that passion. Yeah. Um, how is that being an artist and that kind of deal? Because at some point you're going to have to deal with someone who's like a like either a studio selling your stuff or. Yeah. Or, you know, going to an art show or collaborating with... I don't know exactly what it is, even. <laughs> I'm talking out of my ass. <laughs> or, you mean like, how do you... What do you mean? How do you navigate that? Yeah, or? how do you how do you navigate? Because, like, in, in yeah, in, in essentially, I mean, it becomes more corporate in that sense for for a brief moment. It, it's almost like... I've had talks about this with uh, a few people. 
more exclusively with uh, my collab partner, Francis. It's almost like being uh, the drug dealer. <laughs> being a drug dealer, but knowing like you're the drug dealer and the drug, though. Like, I supply the drug that I'm trying to, you know, sell to people. So, oh, <laughs> I'm the drug, but I'm still the dealer. So, it's like having that mindset of knowing how to, you know what I, I mean? Check like that we're recording. Just so okay, yeah, so keep, wait, keep going on that sentiment. <laughs> nah, you always just have to, you know, remind that, you know, like, yeah, I am the drug, but I don't just want to get high, like, on my own shit all the time. Like, <laughs> that's, I, see, that you were thinking that, I do get that you were in your own shit, stuff. Yeah, I do, I do get high on my own shit, I definitely do, but I don't want to be, like, forever just be the only one getting high off my yeah. shit. And then I got to be the dealer, and I got to know how to. You know, I'm getting away. I'm getting a lot better with that. I, mm-hmm. like I said, I'm a quiet person usually by nature. I don't really, you know. How do you step monitor? Out. How do you monitor? Like, because that's one thing I have an issue with too. Is how do you monitor, like, whether feedback is real or not? Whether it's just someone trying to like be a yes man. Well, I mean, you usually feel it. You can feel. I, I, I yeah, yeah generally. I I, I see, tell people all the time. I know, I know feelings more than language. Yeah, but you know, I as, you I sometimes tend to be more because I tend to be more like cautious and sometimes apprehensive yeah. and sometimes I get it over wrong sometimes. Oh, I'm right? always open to it. It's like I give I give everything a shot. But mm. if it's something that just like just said or something, it'd be like ah, uh, no, I don't feel it. <laughs> but I always I always would you know take take due process. I always you know would look yeah. at it and be like, is this cool? Is this not? You know, I just don't just go blindly i just like all right yeah you can't i kind of i shouldn't say I, do, I, I don't go blindly but i i, I it's, it's a weird like a blind not blind person <laughs> like i'm blind when Ruling i want to blindness be. yeah i'm blind when i want to be <laughs> yeah yeah that's no that's totally cool i mean i i totally respect that I, I see where you're coming from i think that that speaks to your work in a way yeah. i mean so um let me just you know let me just tell them where to find you again Chilling absolutely you. um so you can find my guy on Instagram, yep. it's at c a p t dot l g. Hell yeah! And then you got to go to lazygenius.com. It's lazy genius without the a in the lazy. Hell yeah! Um, again, <laughs> if you want to support the movement, if you want to check out, we were talking about sermon. Uh, we were talking about a couple other things on there, so check it out so you can get some context. Um, and then, uh, Captain, I would like to give you the opportunity to sign us out and give some shout outs, and then I'll just do the last intro and we're good. True indeed. Uh, this is Captain, you know. Uh, what else you got? Now, this is Captain, one part of the world class Lazy Genius Swim Club team. Shout out to my brother, Wazer. Also, one part a Captain Frank. Shout out to Frances Berry. Uh, where is Frances on Instagram? Go look her up. Uh, she has a lot of dope shit if you haven't seen that shit she has a lot of dope shit we do a lot of dope things together uh shout out to everybody in san diego uh lose watching my boy lucian i got uh, my boy joe with the wall collective he does a few things down there um and everybody else i just a bunch of names i it's a bunch of people but shout out to yourself i don't know <laughs> shout out to everyone shout out to everyone always i mean hell yeah it's all love it's all shout love. out to everybody out there selling lemon heads and the people making lemon heads and the people <laughs> making dickies clothes i love dickies and lemon heads uh yeah <laughs> shout out to dickies and lemon heads you heard it here first hey it's 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 candy it's hell yeah. candy and good air hell yeah candy and good air and shout out to everybody that uh what else? I had something else. I forgot it. <laughs> I'll, we'll put it in if you. Yeah, we'll put it in. Hey guys, thank you so much for tuning in to another episode of the Oddcast, where we talk about people turning their passion into professions. We share great folks' stories, whether it be art, whether it be business, whether it be music, whether it be barbers, whether it be pilots, whether it be pilots and artists. We share it all, and we appreciate you taking the time to tune in and tune in to the next time to the Oddcast, where we talk about passion to paychecks. Thank you so much and have a great day. Let's get a little weird. Let's get a little odd. Those sounds you like to hear. We got it going on. It's the odd cast. It's the odd cast. It's the odd cast. It's the odd cast. cast.